Good morning, my name is Kiwal Darawal. I'm the Executive Director of the ICCP and a former National President of the Canadian Information Processing Society. I'd like to talk to you today about the value of professional associations and why you might want to become a member. My presentation particularly focuses on these professional associations and why they are vital for students and workers who are seeking to make progress in their careers. Membership in these professional associations helps those who seek greater challenges and the resulting financial, personal and societal rewards from doing more complex work. Professional associations exist in all domains of work such as medicine, engineering, accounting and computers. Today my presentation will focus on four things. What organizations exist in computer associations and where can I get more information? Two, uh, why attend a professional association meeting? And then why might you want to become a member? And then what benefits accrue from this membership? Some of the professional associations in computers that I'd like to bring to your attention are ACM, the Association for Computing Machinery, AITP, the Association of IT Professionals, KIPS, the Canadian Information Processing Society, DEMA International, uh, DEMA International, the Data Management Association, ICCP, the Institute for the Certification of Computer Professionals, and uh, IEEE, the Institute for Electrical Electronics Engineers. Uh, all of the previous mentioned uh, associations are founding members uh, or uh, current members of the ICCP, the Society of Professional Associations. ISSA, the Information Systems Security Professional, and PMI, the Project Management Institute, offer specialty credentials uh, that are um, focused on their particular knowledge sets that they're uh, interested in. This is not a comprehensive list of professional associations, but just a representative sample. So why attend a professional association meeting? Well, in order to advance your career, you need to gain access to knowledge, networks, resources, and online media um, for your workplace. In terms of knowledge, there are national standards and emerging research, both from government-funded research as well as private uh, institutional research. And these are often um, made uh, or published uh, through these professional associations uh, to gain uh, a better um, uh, publicity for them uh, as the uh, research uh, enters the marketplace. In terms of knowledge, um, you really do have an opportunity to, as a, as a professional member, uh, to contribute towards setting these national standards. In terms of networks, uh, you do meet people uh, in these uh, social settings at dinner meetings or professional meetings uh, who may be interviewing you in the future. Uh, you do have an opportunity through discussion uh, to help you solve problems that you are facing at work. Uh, it's useful for, to, for you to be able to ask peers uh, whether they face similar situations and how they resolve them, be they technical or social or team oriented. In terms of resources, there are lots of white papers that are published by the professional associations. For example, how to put together a disaster recovery plan. And these have often been reviewed and updated by hundreds of professionals in the industry. These then become a blueprint for success and really lead to your progress in your company. There are many online courses or online uh, media that are available or self-study media. And these have been written and led by practicing professionals or working professionals. And though they are less academically focused, they are nonetheless pretty comprehensive and uh, really focused on practical issues for the workplace. So why become a member? Really this is to show your potential or current employers that you are serious about being a professional, that you have a professional approach to work, and that you've taken control of your personal and professional development. It shows that you're enthusiastic about good practices in your profession and that you're dedicated to practicing your profession in an ethical manner. And that essentially means following a good code of ethics, code of conduct or behavior, and a code of good practice. 
There are many benefits available from becoming a member, and these include some of the following. Uh, publications, uh, peer networks and discussion forums, um, opportunities to grow, to volunteer, to lead people, uh, to improve your communications and uh, public speaking skills. Certainly that's been an area that's uh, helped me greatly. My first presentation at a, a professional association was a disaster, um, but uh, by the end of it I knew that I had to improve and by volunteering uh, and becoming a member of a professional association, I really uh, uh, improved those uh, skills over the years, including uh, making agendas and leading team meetings and being efficient and effective uh, in group settings. It helps you to stay technically current uh, and ahead of changing market and practices. And this is really beneficial to your career and beneficial to your company. You do also get an opportunity to save money on the cost of examinations, the cost of education and networking events, and access to uh, discounted uh, uh, fees for conferences. There is also an opportunity to take part in setting these national standards and evolving the pr profession. And this is an area that I particularly enjoy working in, uh, having done so now for some 20 plus years. There's uh, an opportunity to access uh, reduced insurance costs or other member benefits uh, through group rates and uh, these can include health, motor, house insurance as well as professional practices insurance if you're an independent contractor. So what do I do next? That's the real question that uh, faces most individuals. Uh, let me start at the beginning. If you're a student uh, uh, taking a two or a four year program, uh, then I would recommend you become a student member of organizations like ACM, KIPS, IEEE, ISSA, AITP, ICCP, etc. You really should look at uh, uh, attempting to get a student uh, level credential, the Associate Computing Professional, uh, which is uh, uh, two exams that you have to pass, or the Information Systems Analyst, which is again two exams for four-year university students or uh, become an associate member at KIPS in uh, Canada and uh, these associate membership fees are at a very low cost to you and I really recommend you uh, become a member as soon as possible. Upon graduation and starting work, and some of you may be working and studying at the same time, uh, you may want to think about moving towards a specialized credential uh, such as uh, Certified Information System Security Professional or information system security auditor, or even vendor credentials such as Oracle, Cisco, and Microsoft. As you advance in your company and you seek team leadership, uh, um, you may get opportunity to lead teams of people, and uh, um, you may be involved in uh, project management practices. Uh, really, at that point, I recommend you take uh, a specialized credential such as the project management professional credential. But be aware that uh, it's a very hard exam to pass and it does require hundreds of hours of uh, experience as a project manager. Later, as you either become or seek to become a senior manager uh, or your uh, goal is set on becoming a chief information officer or a chief technology officer, and at the same time you've gained many, many years of experience, uh, at that point, uh, I recommend you take the Certified Data Management Professional uh, Credential or, or uh, Certified Business Intelligence Professional Credential or Certified Computing uh, Professional or Information Systems uh, Professional from KEPS as well as the IT Certified Professional from KEPS. These are at the high end of the industry and really uh, intended for more senior level uh, members. You can get a lot of the information that you need through the ICCP uh, and it links to the uh, professional associations that exist out there. Uh, in many cases, uh, some of the ICCP exams can be challenged uh, by having already a previous credential uh, from uh, organizations like PMI or ISSA. I want to thank you for letting me speak to you today and I hope you find this information useful. If you wish to contact me, you can do so through the ICCP. Office at ICCP.org is the email, and uh, I look forward to hearing from you. Thank you.